It still needs to be taller. Well, what if we, uh huh. What if we just do this? Hello! So, I thought it was probably about time that I did a DVD collection video. I did ask on Twitter the other day if that's what people wanted to see, and a surprising number of people wanted to see me talk about Velvet Buzzsaw, but I'm going to be minimizing the amount of reviews that I make this year. I'm going to stick to one a week just because I feel like there's such a volume of opinion on films and I feel like discussion about films can be shaped quite differently. So I didn't want to make a Velvet Buzzsaw review and instead I'm going to do a complete DVD collection because this is the first time I've ever done a video like this. I did make a video about my bookshelf last year when I created these bookshelves and put them all together so I'll link to that in the description. If you'd like to see a video about the books that I have feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm more than happy to do that but it just seems like more people watch this channel for movie related stuff. So. Without further ado, now that I have put all of them in there, I am going to do a DVD collection tour. As always, I won't be saying too much about every single thing because there are quite a few of them. There's close to 300 or more than 300 now, which is a little bit weird for me who considers herself to just be a book hoarder, but let's get to it. As you can see, we still have massive piles of ones that I haven't watched yet. But uh, we're not talking about those today because these, I only put the ones that I have watched in these shelves so that I can say they're part of my collection. I just feel a little bit phony if I say that they're part of it and I haven't watched them yet. So we're just going to start with these. So I, of course, organized my DVDs in alphabetical order. Uh, same with my TV shows down the bottom. Uh, which is a little bit different to how I organize the books because they're kind of in a rainbow formation but it makes a lot more sense when it comes to the movies to have them in alphabetical order. So beginning in the beginning we have 2001 A Space Odyssey. The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. Now this is a movie that I would love to point out to people who haven't seen it before because I know a lot of people who know of Guy Pearce and Hugo Weaving from their works in a lot of sci-fi films but this is one of the ones where they began. So if you haven't checked out The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert it is on the 1001 Movies to Watch Before You Die list. It's Australian, it's amazing and Turns out my old boss, I think, used to date one of the guys that this is based on. So please go and check out this movie. Next, we have Akira, Amelie, which I got from a thrift store. A Monster Calls. Now, this one is still in its wrap, but I have definitely seen A Monster Calls and I'm actually considering re-watching it again before I leave. This movie is so, so powerful. And if you didn't get a chance to go and see it in 2017, I think, when it was released, please go and check it out now. Amour is so high on my list of films. It is a foreign film. It's about this older French couple and it's amazing. Argo, Arrival, because in this house we stand Amy Adams and Jeremy Renner for that matter. Atonement, Avengers Infinity War, Babe, another Australian movie that a lot of people have seen but don't really, like, don't realize it's Australian. A Baby Driver, which I have seen even though it's in its wrap. Back to the Future, the trilogy. Batman, Big Eyes, Black Swan, another one of those ones that is absolutely the top of my list. If you haven't seen Black Swan yet, please check it out. Natalie Portman nails it. Blade Runner, the director's cut. The Blair Witch Project. Boogie Nights. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Cabin in the Woods, which absolutely surprised me when I saw it. That has become one of my favorite movies of all time. Both of the Carrie versions, which I watched both of them because I did a collaboration with um, Britton Steven, the BS review. So I'll link to that in the description. Casablanca, The Cat in the Hat, which I finally watched. The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith, another Aussie film. Chicago. The highly overrated Citizen Kane. No, I'm just kidding. It's not overrated. Coyote Ugly, which is still a banger and I still listen to that soundtrack. 
Dirty Dancing because I carried a watermelon. Two versions of Donnie Darko. I'm not sure why I have two versions. I think my friend gave me the director's cut and then I got the normal one. This is such a different collection to my film tube friends that are boys. This is actually really funny. Uh, Dracula. Uh, this is Bram Stoker's Dracula. Filled with sexy time scenes. Two versions of the Duff. I'm pretty sure I got this one from a friend and then I bought the Blu-ray. I don't know why. Anyway, The Edge of Seventeen. I did not even realize that I had that on DVD. Okay, I'm very excited. That just came out on Netflix recently as well. Edward Scissorhands. Elf, because we love Zoe Deschanel. Fahrenheit 9-11. Banger of a soundtrack for this film, even though it's a documentary. I rewatched it recently and it's really, really well done. Fargo, we all know I love Fargo. Ferris Bueller, Get Out, Gallipoli, another Aussie movie. Not really one of my favorites, but check it out if you have the time. Good Morning Vietnam, we also stand Robin Williams in this house. The Graduate. Grave of the Fireflies, more like Grave of How Much I Cried, but anyway. Halloween, which is on the 1001 movies list, and Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, Goblet of Fire, Goblet of Fire, and Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> I had to take this out because I couldn't pull and push DVDs without that one being out. Going rogue because I've had to take this off the tripod because it's not as flexible as I would have liked. So uh, we're just going to go handheld for the rest of... Oh, I'm loving this. I'm loving this hair today. Anyway, so the next row of DVDs, let's go. More Harry Potter movies, of course. Half-Blood Prince, Half-Blood Prince, Deathly Hallows 1 and Deathly Hallows 2. Hidden Figures, which is wrapped, but I've seen. It's one of my very, very favorites from 2017. Uh, How to Be Single, which I think I got for free. Hugo, which I'm super excited to go visiting the filming locations for when I go to Paris soon. The Incredible Hulk, because at one stage I was going to make videos about every single Marvel movie and then I stopped doing that. The Hunger Games, which I love. Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, a classic. Iron Man, because once again I was going to watch through all of them. This is the original It miniseries, actually, which is a TV show, and I don't know why it's not in the TV show section. I think because I wanted to build up my shelves out here because it's only recently that I've brought these out. So, well, let's just put that on the ground for a second. Uh, Jackie, which I love. I absolutely love Natalie Portman. Jaws, Jurassic World, Kiki's Delivery Service, which I watched recently. Kill Bill, which is a masterpiece. Knights of Badassdom, which I like, pretty sure I bought with like an ex boyfriend and then we watched it and we were like, no. <laughs> Lantana, another Australian film. The Last Wave, another Australian film, which is actually quite creepy. So if you like creepy ish ones, then go and check that one out. Legally Blonde, because I have to. Les Mis, which I adore. Life of Pi, which I haven't seen in ages, and I haven't watched it on, you know, 4K yet, and I should definitely do that. Lilo and Stitch 1, and Lilo and Stitch, Stitch has a glitch, which is my absolute favorite of all time. Well, this one is. Not necessarily this one, it's really sad. Lost in Translation, Love Actually, Mad Max, Mamma Mia, of course. No, not of course. I actually am not a huge fan of the first Mamma Mia. The second one was probably my best cinema experience of 2018 though, so just because everyone's happy at a Mamma Mia screening, you know, everyone loves it. No one's there to be mean, you know, positivity. The Martian, both of the Miracle on 34th Streets, Moneyball, which I watched recently and really loved, even though I hate sports, Moonlight. Moulin Rouge, My Brilliant Career, another Aussie one, uh, My Fair Lady, which I so desperately wish I had seen when I was younger because I loved it, Out of Africa, Meryl Streep, 
Picnic at Hanging Rock, another Aussie film that's super creepy. Pitch Perfect 1 and 2, which I watch when I am having a really bad day. Pokemon the first movie, Precious, The Prestige, which I love. Pretty Woman, I think I got this from a thrift shop. Psycho, Rabbit Proof Fence, another classic Aussie film which needs to be seen by more people. Roman Holiday, Red Wall, because I love those books as a kid. They're actually down there. <laughs> Romper Stomper, which freaks me out. Room, because this, uh, just that movie is amazing and it's where I sort of started my love for Brie Larson. Rugrats, because it was two for $15 and everyone needs a Rugrats in their collection. Scarface. Schindler's List. There have been so many people lately that I've seen that have not seen Schindler's List. So if you haven't seen this movie, you need to go and check it out. It is very, 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 very important. Moving on to this last little section, we have School of Rock, which I had to displace from the other shelf so that I could move things. Seven, which I love. Let's actually just move that. The Silence of the Lambs. The Sixth Sense. Slumdog Millionaire, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and if you don't appreciate just how important that Gwen Stacy scene is, I'm sorry, but I just don't know whether we can be friends, you know? Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, uh, that is a friend's copy, I'm not sure why I still have it. Steel Magnolias, which was lit, I'm just kidding, but it's a really good movie. Uh, Straight Outta Compton, which I watched recently, Strictly Ballroom, another Aussie film. Stripes and Groundhog Day. I actually haven't seen Stripes, but I've seen Groundhog Day. The Sound of Music, an old school classic that's still one of my favorites. Super Bad, which I actually enjoyed and only just saw the other day. They Came Together, a very tongue-in-cheek look at dating movies. To Kill a Mockingbird, Tootsie, Top Gun, Train Spotting, Vertigo. <laughs> that one I do think is overrated. Uh, Watchmen, Whiplash, and finally, oh, goodbye, this five movie collection which has Fern Gully, Fern Gully 2, Anastasia, Thumbelina, and most importantly, Casper Meets Wendy, <laughs> that I got for five dollars at a thrift shop. I love Casper Meets Wendy. My arms are actually really hurting from holding this camera now, so <sighs> you're welcome. Now, finally, we're going to move on to the television DVDs, which are the most important bits. I really should zoom out so that you can see my hair in all of its glory. Um, we're going to move on to that bit because I've never talked to you guys about my, DVD, my like TV on DVD collection before because I usually keep it somewhere very separate. Um, but it's actually quite extensive these days, so let's go through those. So starting down here again, once again in alphabetical order, we have Banana. Now Banana is this, uh, it's part of this trilogy I suppose. We have Banana, Cucumber, and then there's Tofu. It's this series about like LGBTQ people in the UK and it's really interesting. And the most interesting thing, probably for other people who haven't seen it before, is that Letitia Wright is in this series and no one knows about it. So if you haven't watched it, Cucumber is incredibly, incredibly uh, confronting. Banana is too to a certain extent, but I would definitely recommend checking it out if you know, you can handle it. Um, I had no idea about it. It's on the 1001 TV shows list, but it's definitely interesting. Now, I have three series of The Big Bang Theory. I actually have four series of it. Uh, this is my anxiety show. This got me through a very tough time, and sometimes when I'm feeling my very worst anxiety, it's the only thing that I can still watch. So, yes, I do have lots of those. Season one of Bob's Burgers. Four seasons of Bones, which I'm currently I'm re-watching season five at the moment. If you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you will know that Bones has basically just been my entire life these past couple of months. So um, any Bones love, tell me in the comments below. Breaking Bad, the entire everything of Breaking Bad. 
Community. I also have season two, but I never completely finished this series, so I'm currently on a rewatch at the moment. Cucumber. Firefly, because there ain't no power in the verse that could keep me from owning everything about Firefly. Friends, every season except season eight, because that's the only season I successfully sold on eBay before I realized that I wanted to have them all. So, yay. Full House, seasons one and two. Full House is also becoming another one of those like anxiety proof shows. So I've been slowly watching through it and I'm going to be really sad when that runs out. But it's all on Netflix. So once again, yay. Game of Thrones, first season, first season, second season. I think I got one of these. Yeah, this one is from someone for free on a buy nothing page. Anyway. Gilmore Girls, every season except the first season, because I don't know, apparently I just don't have that. Girls, which is a show that I'm still sort of getting into. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Lena Dunham's character is very frustrating. Glee, <laughs> the entirety of Glee. So Glee is a show that I watched religiously when I was 19. Uh, I found an old video the other day which actually says that Sue Sylvester was, which is that one, Jane Lynch's character, was in my top three TV characters when I was younger. So, um, interesting. And then after about season three, I kind of lost it with it, but I am a completionist, so I had to finish it. And I did. <laughs> and that's the that one, that. Gossip Girl, I only have the first three seasons, but I've seen everything of Gossip Girl. Hamish and Andy's uh, Oz vs New Zealand and Hamish and Andy's Caravan of Courage. Oh, they're both Caravan of Courage. Uh, they're kind of like this funny Australian comedy show, if you don't know what they are. Uh, and they're not very good, but I have seen them because I complete everything. Two seasons of How I Met Your Mother. I have seen every episode of How I Met Your Mother. The IT crowd, I've only seen this season. Jamae, Private School Girl, and Jonah from Tonga. Now, speaking of funny Australian comedies, these are a little bit more funny. Uh, they are a little bit offensive as well. But um, yeah, I really loved the guy. He also did Summer Heights High and Angry Boys as well. So, Chris Lilly. I think he stopped now. Keeping up with the Kardashians. So, long story, that's on the 1001 TV shows to watch before you die list, so I've seen the first season of it. The Private Life of Plants, I am a biologist, so I absolutely freaking love nature documentaries. Uh, Modern Family, the first six seasons, which um, when I had a month off last year because I was like just needed time off, um, I pretty much just watched Modern Family the whole time and I still need to catch up slash finish. New Girl is my favorite TV show of all time after Parks and Recreation. So I have three seasons of that, but I'm still not even finished with that show. The Office, I haven't seen the final seasons, the final two seasons of The Office. So this was me catching up. Parenthood, which I love. It's kind of a more serious look at families compared to Modern Family. If you watch sort of Parenthood and Modern Family, kind of a lot of the same sort of tropes but uh, Parenthood looks a lot deeper at things like single mothers and I don't know, just all kinds of things really. Autism actually is one of the big ones. Uh, Parks and Recreation I only have three seasons of but I've seen every single episode of that show twice. Party Down which I'm not a huge fan of but it's what um, Adam Scott was doing before he was chosen to be on Parks and Recreation. So it de depending on what kind of humor you have, if you like sort of darker humor, if you like workaholics, actually, you might really like Party Down. Pokemon season one, I have a lot of other Pokemon DVDs, but I haven't completely watched them. So they're up there. So yep, yeah. all of Pretty Little Liars because that show is just absolutely hilarious and also amazing. So, if you're here to be anti Pretty Little Liars, um, you can leave. Puberty Blues is this Australian TV show. It was on the 1001 
TV shows list. It's basically set where my mum grew up at the time where she grew up and it's super, it's really re weird to watch it and know that. It's just, it's just a great show though. Um, if you're Australian and you haven't seen Puberty Blues, I would recommend it. If you're American, I'm not sure if you'll understand any of it, but, um, give it a try anyway, because it's pretty solid. Rick and Morty Season 1, which is about as far as I got. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Scrubs, which I've seen all of. The Simpsons Season 1, because I'm doing a big rewatch. Um, and then Scrubs again, apparently. I'm not sure how that got mixed up. Sex and the City Season 1, which I'm slowly watching through. Well, I've seen Season 1 and on Season 2, but it's actually really funny because the amount of times I've been on a plane and because for some reason Virgin Australia just has a lot of Sex and the City on their planes and I don't think they realise that it's HBO, so there's like a lot of titties in this show. And the number of times I've been on a plane and someone has been like, oh, just watch Sex and the City, and then they turn it on and there's a sex scene and they freak out. It's like part of my going on a plane bingo checklist at this point. It's, it's insane. Uh, the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, which I've only seen season one of. I'm working my way through season two. The entirety of Veronica Mars. Is that the movie? Why is the movie... Okay, so the movie should be in the movie section. But anyway, the entirety of Veronica Mars, which is one of my favorite shows, right next to another one of my absolute favorite shows, which is The West Wing. I tore through seven seasons of this 40-minute drama about politics in about two months because I absolutely love The West Wing. And it's got this fellow. Where is he? Ta-da! And it's also got Alice and Jenny. And Delay Hill, and just pretty much Rob Lowe, you know, it's got everyone in it that people really love these days, and yet a lot of people haven't seen The West Wing, and it's amazing. And then finally, over this side, we have Will and Grace, which is another classic, and a show that I grew up with, and a show that basically just made me want to make people laugh. And I don't know how often I do make people laugh, because I feel like I'm a very serious content creator lately, but, you know... Will and Grace is amazing. And then I have two seasons of Workaholics. I just started on season three today and a season of Young Sheldon, which I was gifted and then I watched. And, you know, being someone who, you know, obviously has a lot of the Big Bang Theory in their collection, I'm probably the most open-minded towards Young Sheldon. And, you know, it's okay. It's not great, but it's not horrible. It has a couple of redeeming qualities, so, you know, if you think it's for you, maybe give it a try. But it's it's probably not that great. <laughs> anyway, that has been the absolute mess that is in the background of my video. Um, that has been my DVD collection. If there are things that you want to talk about, because I have seen all of these things. So if you're like, oh my goodness, I love that movie or I love that TV show, Please let me know. Are they shoes in the background? Yes, they are shoes in the background. Um, please let me know because that's the entire reason that I talk about these sorts of things is so that I can find other people to talk about them with. And yes, so I hope you've enjoyed this very long video. Now I get to go and edit it. So I will see you guys soon. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram if you want more updates about things that I'm currently watching because I always post on my Instagram stories and I usually post something on Twitter about it. So um, if you have similar tastes to what I do, because I know that those tastes are a little bit different to other people that you may see doing these sorts of similar things. So um, if you do, let me know and I will see you guys soon with another video. It's my birthday in three days as well. So um, please subscribe because uh, that would be really nice birthday present. So see you later, goodbye.